I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey, Team is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. I got another Ragnar YOLO event for you today and the uh, clan battle season with the map hotspot. But before we begin, if you guys see any value to the channel, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the comments, support, building up community, the kindness you guys have shown me. And that's really awesome. And for that, at 2,000 subs, we're going to do a free premium DD giveaway event. So I hope you guys uh, look forward to that. So let's get right to it. Hotspot. Another Ragnar video. Ragnar actually seeming to be very, very powerful this clan battle season and i actually really really enjoy it hope you guys as well but let's take a look at the strategy the basic strategy of the yolo um if you don't know it's basically hey you just go plow right through and then uh just take on anybody and conquer the world right but this is a little bit more uh i would say uh the, the strategy that we wanted to implement today with the yolo is to be a little bit more with finesse and elegance as well as a little bit of twist there because, you know, we just don't want to rush to our desk, but we actually want to do it with some kind of coordination. So, right, the basic idea of a YOLO is we all move together in mass through a cap and just eliminate as many people as we can, not caring if we die or not and just sacrificing our ship, the AK, the YOLO. Um, but also, uh, but this is a team YOLO. Usually YOLO is done by yourself. However, we're since we're playing clan battles, let's be more competitive. So that's the idea for this basic map. However, we're going to do a little twist on it now. So what, what does the enemy most likely do? So I, I always look at this from the aspect of well what is the enemy going to do so i can figure out most of the time they push to the east go right through the middle and a couple guys go to the cap knowing this just looking at what they're going to do right there what can you assess and uh, maybe try to react to this in order to make the best coordinated attack and best uh i would say educated decision right Knowing what they're going to do right there, so I'll actually move the ship so you can see it. They're probably going to send one destroyer, one cruiser there to cap, and then one, of course, maybe a DD caps this spot, a cruiser, and another cruiser go here, and maybe another cruiser uh, supports this DD, and the battleship usually is in the back, right? That's kind of like what I've seen most teams do in clan battles. Well, the YOLO is going to plow right through all of that, and how are you going to accomplish this? So um, I've told, I instructed my team is to have the... Um, first DD will probably linger in, try to cap while the other destroyer actually will actually go through and use its stealth and concealment, uh, preferably a good one that has good concealment will go through and sneak and try to, uh, split the gap here and spot by that time, these ships will probably have maneuvered way further away from their spawn. And now the DD can actually potentially, if possible, they'll spot right here. If they're not detected within a certain amount or they can see all the ships. Okay, of course, destroyers can do that. They can spot from distance with my, while maintaining concealment. You can then press in and decide whether you want to take Alpha from the rear or uh, support our team at Charlie. The other cruisers are going to literally just, in mass, go right down the middle and just plow right through with the battleship. I've always said the battleship should be the punching bag. You have the most HP of any ship in the game, most likely, right, if you pick the right one. And you are literally there to absorb damage while everyone else, while you're drawing fire, is able to concentrate eliminating a ship one by one. When you can get all guns on mass on one target, you eliminate one. Now you're at seven versus six. Eliminate another seven versus five. So that's the idea going into that strategy the basic um, concept. It's not very cosmic, just more guns on target, right? So how we're going to do this is, again, the visualization of it is, again, one destroyer just plows right through while the other destroyer uh, goes up and spots and gives the advantage while the main bulk of the force will support each other in a conga line, if you want to call it that. And then as you're pushing through, the destroyer should be able to eliminate this destroyer, and that destroyer will spot the rest of the team, supported by maybe a radar cruiser and another heavy armor cruiser, and then the cruisers will push forward like this, and then the battleship will support in tow. Now, what do you do in this position afterwards? Why? They got they probably have captured A, and they're probably, now that they know that it's a YOLO, they're probably going to proceed to B. So they're going to have two caps, right? So what do you do in this particular situation? Well, guess what? We are going to now uh, use our superior numbers. Now, most likely, I think these cruisers will support behind. Now, here's the thing. They're out of the fight. They're kind of behind an island. They can't really shoot in. And they're going to have to charge into this focal point right here. I've always said this is the, you know, cone of fatal funnel, cone of death, because everybody's firing right into this guy. We're assuming that we have eliminated at least one or two ships right here. So these guys are gone. We'll say that. And all we have left is maybe a battleship or whatever lingering around here somewhere. And then really something along these lines. Now you've got a superior fire advantage. You can eliminate one or two. They're going to have to slowly creep in. We're probably going to take a couple losses. But now, guess what? They have to defend Alpha Bravo, which I've said is always the good thing. So the pros about this is maximum firepower. The cons about this is they have two caps 
you know, for them. So I've, I've looked at both strategies. We've tried one where we try to cap Alpha Bravo, and then this is the one where we're just capping Charlie. So let's take a look at actually how this plays out, but what would you rather be in? Would you rather have two, one cap versus two, but you have superior numbers of firepower? Or would you rather have two caps and uh, smaller numbers? So it just depends on how this actually turns out, but it actually works out um, to be that in the end, uh, this destroyer will probably, if uh, the enemy does continue moving back towards us to fight, if they want to, uh, we'll go and cap alpha. That That is that is the fail safe on this plan right here to protect us from losing by caps. And now we're then after we've eliminated this force over here, the rest of the enemy team has to come support us. And now again, we have islands cover and they have to come take Charlie while they're forgetting about alpha is being capped by our friendly destroyer. And then, of course, we have superior firepower. Now they got to figure out how to enter these choke points in order to capture Charlie to maybe take back the game or even try to win uh, somehow by killing us or taking cap. So let's see. Let's take a look at actually how this pans out and see uh, what develops from it. And I uh, hope you enjoy. All right, team, here we are on the map hotspot in the Ragnar. Ragnar being one of my favorite uh, ships here. I believe it is still available in the Armory for Steel. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been a while since I've checked on it, but I think it is for Steel. Probably one of the best ones that I've gotten, and uh, I really, really enjoy it. You can see it's got the good health pool, 26,500. You can build higher if you want to. I honestly don't need it. I, I really focused on the gun build of this thing just to get as much firepower DPM downrange as possible, and it's just been a blast doing it. So you you can see our complement right now. We got the Summers, which is got great concealment, good torpedoes. Very difficult to get these days. I don't think it's available anymore. Someone had asked in the chat, "How do you get a Summers these days?" Uh, I don't know. I think it was a crate or an armory, armory event or something for coal, maybe. I forgot. Anyways, that used to be available. Now we don't. Now we also have a four cruiser complement, which I do recommend. So two uh, destroyers, four cruisers, and a battleship. So we got our Hanover, which is our great punching bag right there, and we're going to help spot for them and then of course the other four cruisers can be whatever complement you want preferably radar cruisers as you can see the team the enemy team is doing what i anticipated you get sending a cruiser maybe a uh, destroyer over to alpha now it's time to focus fire on whoever we see first i mean really we're just plowing right through two cruisers right there and we're using our powerful 152 millimeter guns to penetrate 30 millimeters of armor on the uh, the nevsky and i know the nevsky is literally just made out of butter uh we will penetrate majority of his uh superstructure and armor area and look we're just getting these nice hits we're gonna start fires we're gonna cause damage look at all that firepower right there this is exactly what i want i really appreciate the fact that you know either a battleship player or cruiser is not sitting in the back and actually pushing forward this is clan battle it's competitive you should be pushing forward and providing all that firepower right there first one goes down great job right there hinnebert and now we see the other destroyer the other summers right there also sticking its little rear end out the back right there and we're going to take some nice juicy damage and starting a fire on him and getting as much damage as we can because he doesn't have any heals any kind of damage you put on a destroyer at the beginning of the match will play off in dividends if you have to face it at the very end. You might as well get as a quick shot on it as as quick as possible. Look at those! Look at that damage right, 2,900 on a GK. I mean, imagine if you're taking 2,900 every couple seconds from some kind of random fire destroyer, and that's insane what you can do on a GK. It will melt over time. Oh, here we go. Now we're also supporting our team right here. We do not want a Summers to go YOLO and uh, torp this our poor Napoli here because we want to make sure our Napoli survives so we are going to take shots and cover each other no matter where he is at and boom he goes down great job we've eliminated destroy and cruiser we are now seven versus five we have a superior fire advantage right now now we just took one loss right there that's okay we're losing one Hindenburg is fine for losing there too. Now we're going to just sit here and farm because there's no need to actually rush in because if we rush in, we lose our angle of fire, which means we need to maintain this line of sight right now so that we can get as much fire and help our team get this GK out because he is probably their heaviest player. And we're going to eliminate as much as we can. We're up to 45,000 damage in the first four minutes right here. Start as many fires as you can. You're at your goal, and boom, he goes down. Way to go, Summers. Look at how powerful destroyer player can be. If a destroyer player can eliminate a battleship just like that very quickly, it helps your team out so much. And unfortunately, we lose another cruiser at, or our battleship as well. That's very unfortunate. We that was our two, our heaviest punching bag right there. Very surprised how fast that went down. But hey, we're gonna have to do what we have to do to adapt and overcome with what we have. So we're gonna put some fire in this Puerto Rico here. Very very deadly uh, uh, cruiser, especially. 
difficult to sit at all. It's really, if you can find the sit on on a Puerto Rico, please let me know. It is difficult to find and to do because, man, they, whoever built this thing is uh, it's a superior and it's awesome. And Napoli goes down. We are now on four versus four. Again, what did I say? You're picking a fair match. Your strategy stinks. Uh, we're now neck and neck and even. This can be anybody's match. So this is not the situation I would prefer to want to be in. I would rather have more superior firepower, more ships to kill. And that way we can uh, just have uh, a, a numbers advantage to help us go and eventually cap the points later. Now look at this. They've already capped Bravo, and so we st we're still one one and one cap. So we're, we're looking good okay so far. We're not being overwhelmed by points. And I know their other cruiser or destroyer is actually going down to cap it right now. Our Summers is up top spotting for us as well. He's probably going to take the rear and go for Bravo cap. Right now, we're just trying to start as many fires as possible. Again, this is your role as a destroyer player. My videos really focus on destroyer gameplay of how to be the best destroyer player possible. And you're looking at it right here is what can we do to help our team as a destroyer player? Well, that's one is spotting. Two is actually putting fire down and keeping their enemy at bay and it also being a the distraction for them to take their precious shots which take maybe 20 to 30 seconds to reload to shoot at you and miss that's the goal of a, a good destroyer player is to be the biggest distraction the best contributor the leader and the, and the the pusher of the fight so We've got this uh, Marseille right here. We want to eliminate him as fast as possible. He's near three quarters health. We've got a numbers advantage. Why not go ahead and take him on head on? Look at that. I'm charging a cruiser head on, letting him shoot his shots and totally missing half of his shots. 50% of his damage went to me. And guess what? We're eliminating the threat to our friendly team right there. So we're going to go and nose in, become a slim profile. We do not want to take another shot like that. We got double fires on us and we're going to see if our cruisers can mop up this guy. We're calling in for shots. Damage con our double fires to maintain and save his as much heals as possible we are switching to ap now see if we can go right through and get that citadel if we can find it and good job team there we go eliminate their cruiser right there now you can see we do have a numbers advantage now we have a 50 percent or uh, yeah 100 percent advantage i mean there's four versus two we've got double the ships against them now we're just going to go ahead and see if we can start as many fires on the puerto rico as possible it does burn very well ladies and gentlemen so i normally for me i'm trying to start a fire there's one right there start a fire on a puerto rico typically aiming at the superstructure and working your way back right there's another one on the tail end of the the Puerto Rico, exactly. You see what I just did right there? I'm trying to start as many fires as I can. I'm working in the middle. Naturally, my shells, if they go wonky, will land on the back of the ship, and that will start that second fire. And then the second, the third fire will be somewhere, in the again, near the superstructure area. If you don't know, check a look at the videos about superstructure fire, or just basic fires in general on the World Order ships. You can get a maximum of four. They have uh, fire prevention, which most cruisers don't anymore. There's four spots, the bow, two middle, and the one in the back. Aim for those spots. You can start fires all day, and you can get that thing melting like a candle. So let's see. What do we got here right here? We have 12 minutes left in the game. 120,000 damage on the uh, on the Ragnar here, guys. And th uh, this is a kind of a pretty incredible game for us right here. Now, we're going to sit here and just wait. And again, it's all about being patient. What do we want them to do? We want them to come towards us. Our Summers is capping Bravo. Most guys say, oh, why did you give up free cap? Well, guess what? It's not about who caps first. It's who can maintain and hold the caps for the duration of the game. You can see our Summers now is doing its fantastic job of using stealth and maneuverability and speed to go cap and make sure that we don't lose based on points. Again, the game is very close. It's not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. So now we're going to see if we can go ahead and help our team and melt this Puerto Rico down. He is now peeking around and a uh, very bad mistake on his part, being, being constantly spotted, and then he's moving in reverse, giving us full access to his superstructure again. We're going to go ahead and fire, but he's going to take a shot at us. Look at that. He actually saw us as a threat. He fired 12 shells at us, and I think we're going to take a major damage here. Yeah, he took away all our uh, healing right there, and it goes back down to 10,000 health now. Now we're going to see if we can use our DPM and fire rate. This is why I love destroyers, guys, because the rate of fire is way more superior and gives us the ability to make a difference in the game. He fires again, wasting his shots on us, not firing our teammates, while our teammates return the fire in favor. And, ooh, he gets a nice shot on us. That's not what we want to do. Again, that's why I like the Ragnar. The health pool lets us do a lot of this absorbing of damage right here. We don't want to lose any more damage because we don't have any more heals. Can we get this last kill right here? Come on. One more hit. One more hit. And boom, there goes our first shot. Worst kill right there. I'm sorry. One shot. Splash one. He goes down. Final ship in the game, and we are at 151,000. And this is pretty much a easy mop up for the rest of our team. We've now capped all three points. Again, the key role is to eliminate both their destroyers. I mean, you eliminate the destroyers immediately off the bat. That is ex that is literally crippling in a team. They have no spotting, no capping, and no torping, and no smoking. And that really helps out a lot. And after this, it's pretty much just a simple brawl 
for the rest of the match. So uh, I'll just kind of speed it up right here so I won't bore you guys. And, uh, yep, that's match right there. Uh, just simple, hey, we got all three captains in. We eliminated all the ships, and that's kind of what you want to see when you're actually uh, doing the kind of a, a, that potential, particular uh, strategy right there. I call it the Team YOLO. But, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your uh, thoughts below in the comments and sections. Like, subscribe, below. You see value in the channel. And, as well, the build is at the end of the screen. Take a look at it. Let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think? Uh, what could you uh, think would be better? Uh, I always like the, the full gunboat build, as always and appreciate again all you guys is, uh, saying hello when you see me out there. I mean, it's really great that you're building a great community, fostering a very friendly kind of uh, environment. I know there's a lot of you know bad chit-chat out there, but we're going to make it better, right, guys? But hope you guys are doing well. We'll see you guys next time, and you guys stay safe. Cheers.